Good afternoon. How are you today, Kelly? I'm doing great. Who are we? Downtown Diaries. We're the <laughs> dynamic duo. We mix it up a little bit. We are your Oxford Downtown Diaries. We are here for our fifth and six, fifth or sixth installment. I'm good. Just we got a we lot. Have more than five. At yeah, this point. Yes. five plus. So you're good. Are you excited about our guest today? You know I'm always excited about our <laughs> guest today. We have D. Scott Taylor on from Sick Pizza. Hello. How are you, Scott? Excellent, excellent. Nice to be here. We're so now, happy to have Scott you. Already has such a great radio voice, oh, but know. this is not your first time in the studio. You've been on the radio quite a few times, right? Um, yeah, just a couple. Of times. <laughs> yeah, don't be yeah. shy. It's don't fine. be coy. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so we're going to talk about you today, Scott. How do you feel about that? Uh, I'll do my best. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, to be honest with you, we all know we love your pizza. How many years have you been open now? It'll be three on Father's Day. Okay. Oh. So almost three years now. You are our go-to place for sure. And But we really don't know how you got started in this venture. So why don't you just give us a little bit of background? Okay. Um when I was a kid, I actually worked at a pizza place that was in Lake Orion called Marco's Pizza. So it had no affiliation with the chain Marco's. And it's actually, it was where CBS is now at Atwater and 24. And it was a place, um, basically, it was all high school kid ran. Our head manager was 19. Um, the owner would come every day and make the dough and make his secret things. And then we would run it. And it was just awesome. It was like the coolest couple of years of my life. And we all made decent money. We all had nice cars because we saved up our money and everybody could work on cars. So um, it was always a great experience for me. So um, I ended up buying into a pizzeria in the early 90s. And um, it was great, but just it, it was too soon. I was, I was way too young. And I always say I was more concerned about my business card than my business. So... Like, I always wanted to flash my business card, like, hey, look what I own. But um, we ended up, uh, I went on to the corporate world and, and had a great career in a couple different things. And I was working for uh, Lake Orion Plumbing as the director of business development. And COVID happened. So my boss came to me and said, I need a plan. Like, literally, it was the same thing that we all went through at work, I'm sure, when they shut the country down. So, um we went through everyone's salaries and everything. And I said, you need to lay a couple people off and I'm one of them. And he said, are you some kind of idiot? And I said, well, no, like, you know, you tasked me with figuring out, you know, this is a disaster plan. So, um, a friend of mine that I actually owned a pizzeria, the pizzeria with in the nineties has one in Clarkston now called Crave, Steve Templin, Lake Orion grad also. Hey Steve. And, um, I went and worked with him a couple days a week because, like, I hadn't seen him in a long time, and he had started the pizza place. He was super busy, and, you know, I worked with him, like, three days a week just opening, and, um, you know, we did some volunteering, passing out food and things like that. But it was that time in COVID when it was, like, everybody was at home, full lockdown. So um, fast forward a little bit, I went, when I went back to work at Lake Orion Plumbing, my boss said, so when are you buying a pizza place? And I said, as soon as I can find one because, like, the bug totally got me. Once you get it, you get it. So, um, about, and I, I told my family that I have two daughters and my wife and, and we all have confabs at the dinner table, you know? And I said, you know, this pizza place came open in Oxford and all three of them are like, well, let's go look at it. And I'm like, all right. So I took Abby. She was probably, she was 13. So Evie and I were the only ones that were able to go. So we went in, it was Vendetti's then, and we walked in and, and, uh, you know, all tan and vines everywhere and, you know, just kind of the old school feel. And, um, Evie's like, this is like being in Mackinac. And we walked in the back with the owners and met a bunch of people who I ended up hiring a couple of them. So, um, then it was finding a partner and, um, I ended up with Tom Bailey was my, is my partner. And, uh, He's a, fr he's a Lake Orion dude, uh, very successful businessman. He owns a uh, alarm business in Waterford, and then he's also a very decorated race car guy. So his race team is six seconds because he has 
the fastest streetcar in America, which is a whole other story and a whole other whole other podcast. Correct. We'll have to get him in here. Got so it. Um, we went back and forth just a couple days and decided to do it. We made an offer. We got it. So we bought it in April of 21, and we opened in June of 21. And it was kind of hitting the ground running because I hadn't done it in years, and I didn't hire any pizza people. My daughter Natalie had worked at Crave for a few months, so she was okay. And then um, my wife, Jen, was running the front because it was chaos. Like, everybody wanted to try the new guy, mm -hmm. and we were doing it. Um, you know, we used some some pretty modern technology as far as our POS system and things like that. So we were trying to, like, be ahead of the game. Um, and I think we just kind of did it because I stopped buying pizza because I couldn't find a decent pizza, like, Back in the day, we used to cook all our meats from fresh, and we baked all our bread, and all the dough was made fresh, and we ground the cheese and all those things. And it, you'll be hard-pressed to find that anywhere anymore because it's just hard, and it's a pain in the butt, right? So, um, that correct? Say that again. You're your still doing work. that, correct? Yes, it's, every day. Okay. Every day. So, we um, all our meats are sourced from Eastern Market. Um, we use Mike's Food Service, which is... Mike Phipps from the tap. So okay. trying to keep that in the community also. And um, we, the buns for a small stint of time of my life, I was a baker and had a bakery. Oh, you did. I did. And so the bread recipe is our sub buns. No so kidding. those are made weekly from scratch. Um, five things in them. I mean, they're, they're about as pure grandma's white bread as you can get. So, um, we did that and started going and we really haven't stopped. So, yeah, I remember you guys opening up and just thinking I hadn't seen a business that just came in our doors, applied for a grant for the paint and things like that, and then opened up that quickly. And I'm like, wow, they're really on top of things, you know, cause usually you see, oh, the construction takes a little longer and then they get their name out there. But you guys really did open your door so fast. Yeah. And that's, that was one of the, you know, when you, when you buy an existing business, you're just buying the business, right? So, and what is that? That's basically their phone number and that's the equipment that's in the kitchen. Most of the equipment has now been replaced because it was just all old and, and aging and um, it just, you know, you get into refrigeration equipment that's 15 years old, like it's just time, it just has a life. Yeah. There was no walk-in there, so we had to put a walk-in in. So that was literally the only thing we were waiting on was the health department um, to be able to change that. Um, and we had to move some stuff and, you know, lots of paint and lots of love and lots of cool stuff on the walls. And um, we rebuilt the countertops and uh, put TV monitors up for our menu boards. So I guess we did do a lot in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, it and, was quick. <laughs> and literally, it was all my friends. So it was. Oh, that's cool. Um, we were uh, my my two best friends in the world, Nate Butkey and Matt Wandry. We were standing in there right the day I bought it, and they said, "Let's go over to Sullivan's." So we went over to Sullivan's with a sharpie and a pizza insert, a great big piece oh of cardboard, gosh. and we made a list because he's like, what needs to happen? Yeah. Because I was just talking, saying, oh, we got to do this, we got to do this, mm -hmm. we got to do this. And those guys were there every day for two weeks doing something. Oh. like, And it was amazing. And their families and just the the former employees from Vendetti's that I actually hired, I never, they never stopped getting paid. So I would still have them work their shifts and they would just come and scrub walls or scrub pans or scrub floors yeah. or that's awesome. You know you have good friends when yeah. they're showing up to, to do, do renovation work. like that. <laughs> that is good yeah. friends. With no pizza. To, With no pizza. To we had, I we mean, no I'm food. sure yeah. they eat for free for life now. Oh, right. So. They do. They do. Yeah. That's awesome. That is so cool. And the name, it's so funny because I remember the name coming out and thinking, sick what is that all about mm. but with the the race car story behind it it's just it's so neat to hear like all the backstory that goes into the name and um now it's it's a staple in the community right it's right. sick pizza i think it's it, it's funny because obviously it, i still get it but it's normally 80 year old ladies are the only ones that are mad about it now <laughs> um because they're you know sick i'm i'm not gonna eat somewhere called sick and then somebody always chime in like 
you know, sick doesn't mean sick, like cool doesn't mean cold. Right. right? So, yeah, right. Um, but it's, it's a cool conversation starter and, and people are always like, you know, they leave with a smile because you tell them the story and yeah. everybody in the shop knows the story. So it's like, if you're out wearing your shirt and somebody asks, how's a restaurant called sick? Just tell them the story. It's the yeah. elevator 30 cent second speech. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. What about the orange color? Whose idea was that? Um, so the orange, I think that was Tom because, uh, the car had was black with orange on it. And, um, well, I think at that time it might have been white, but they wrap them and, you know, but, um, and I've always loved orange. So the building was like a horrible dark green with khaki. And so I was pretty sure that the DDA was going to let me do whatever I wanted to do as long as it wasn't green or bright orange. So <laughs> or yellow. And I can remember, <laughs> it was funny because I hadn't done these things in years, right? As far as planning review and things like that. And I'm like, do I got to draw a picture? Cause they wanted, you guys wanted to see a picture of yep. the building. So I literally took a picture, made a copy of it. So it was black and white. And then I got colored pencils and I oh colored gosh. it gray. And then once I got it okayed, I went to Home Depot and said, match this colored pencil. And that's, that's hilarious. That's, I did not know this. When how, that came across my desk, that is awesome. That's how we got the gray. That's so, so and funny. then the orange, you know, orange is tough because it can be really yellow or it can be too mm -hmm. red. Yeah. And that, that's a, um, like an old Chevy color called hugger orange, hugger orange. So, um, that's how we got that. That is so Very cool. cool. So what is your best seller? Oh, I mean, I think the best seller will still and always be a pepperoni pizza. Okay. Um, but we do have lots of specialty pizzas do. that, um, unique, kind of unique and kind of takes you outside the box a little yeah. bit. Um, literally. Um, <laughs> some of them don't even have pizza sauce. Some of them have Coney chili. Some of them have Alfredo sauce. Some of them have, uh, pickles. pesto pickles, ricotta cheese. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, but what's your favorite? Oh yeah. So I'm super boring because my favorite is a regular pizza. That's bold pepperoni. So those are the ones that curl up with jalapenos and bacon. Ooh. So okay. the bacon is obviously we had just cooked it. Yeah. Right. And then we grind it. So it's just like. That's not boring at all. I know, but it's not like, oh, I love the Mediterranean pesto yeah. plus yeah. chicken or yeah. something, you know. Like, I'm not a very good salesperson because yeah. I should be talking about $25 <laughs> pizzas and not $15 pizzas. But, um, no, I just, I love making people really good food, and um, I still get excited about it. And it's fun because, like, I personally don't know how many times I've ever said to, like, a restaurant owner, like, that was like an awesome meal. Like, and that's my fault. Like, cause I think we need to, you know, recognize yeah. that to people. But the amount of people that come up to me weekly, like, dude, you've got the best pizza. I'm just like, really? Like, I'm really? Just, I really just went back to the basics of mm -hmm. how, how yeah. food should be and not trying to speed it up so much and not trying to streamline everything and realize that, yes, I'm going to take a smaller profit margin, but in the end I should be okay with, you know, loyalty and just selling good food. Yeah, but the freshness is key. Oh, I mean, sure. that's yeah. when you say that that's your process, I totally believe that after eating your pizza and the the taste. And, I mean, you can tell when something is fresh. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's yeah. definitely worth the price, I would say. You know, you could probably get a more cost, uh, like, what do you call it? Call effective. effective. Yeah. yeah, pizza elsewhere. I would call it cheaper. Well, yeah, okay. that yeah. too, <laughs> but... Because um, it's all about value, girls. Well, it's all about yeah. value. I right. mean, it is, you know. For certain, you know, like we talked about this earlier this week, our kids love cheaper pizza. Sure. I won't throw any names out there, but that we as adults maybe don't gravitate towards. Absolutely. We would gravitate. If I'm going to spend the calories, yeah. it's going to be on sick pizza. It's going to be okay. good <laughs> pizza, right? Um, so one quick question before we move in, because you're very involved in the community, not only in Oxford, but also Lake Orion. But before we get to that, are you, um, like, is it more popular for a round pizza or a square pizza? Because you kind of specialized question. in, like, the Detroit style, right? Yeah. So what do you see more of from an ordering standpoint? Square. Say square. It's, no, say round. I really round. wish it was square because I really think <laughs> the square is better. I love and it, the square. And it's just because I love it. Yeah. But I would say it's probably 60% round and 40% okay. square. And I think that's a lot because... 
people think their kids don't like square, so they right. just don't buy it. But what I've found is, you know, with birthday parties and things like mm-hmm. that, you know, sometimes they'll get squares and I'll get feedback like those kids tore those that square up. Oh, yeah. You know, so I think that in people's minds, they think it's going to be like crunchy and hurt their mouths mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, I. Do you like round better? So I. And like I will gravitate towards round, but I do like the square. I just have to be in the mood. Interesting. And for me, I will take square over round any day of the week. Well, There's it's something all- about the like brown the edges, crunchy yeah. edges. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's delicious. But- and also, there's certain pizzas that just need to be around. Yeah. Like to me, a yeah. pickle pizza is round. Yeah. And I will never touch a pickle pizza. <laughs> right. A barbecue pizza, a barbecue chicken pizza. Yeah. It should be square. That, okay. I'm good with a that. A super eight, which is our loaded one. Yeah. It should be round. Really? Yeah. Okay. Why? I, I don't love know. That. There's there's just something about it. Um, you know, because when it cooks? Well, yeah, because a square, you know, they cook in different ovens. Yeah. So um if you get too much stuff on a square, it's not that it's not cooked, it's just not cooked the same. Gotcha. Oh. Where a round is like Bam! It's Got it. it. It's it. It cooks thoroughly. I figured it having the square platform for all of the toppings would be more effective for you, right? But that yeah. makes sense with the cooking. Yeah, and I, I guess if three years ago you would have asked me, you know, what are you going to sell more of? I would have said, oh, dude, we're pushing right. the square. You know, like yeah. like the food truck. So we haven't said anything about the food truck, but we started a food truck last year, and all I do is square in there. Yeah. So and you get. You get some sour faces, like you know. Do you have, do you have a round pizza? I'm like, no, no, no I don't. It's, yeah. it's Detroit style deep dish. Yeah, That's what the there trucks you go. Call. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, yeah. There are some things that, if as we talk about community, that I'm super impressed with over your three years, always being at concerts in the park, mm-hmm. selling to the guests that come out for that. The pizza truck, which is incredible. I've never seen somebody start their business and then have a truck so fast. Yeah. And then just your community engagement and how you partner with the different businesses. But then also when these two girls call you all the time and we're like, hey, we have an event and we need food. So tell us, how do you balance all of that? Um, I just, I, I grew up, uh, my dad was the, so in the church that we grew up in that we went from the time we were in diapers all the way through three times a week. Um, he was the head trustee. So um, there was the deacons that took care of the spiritual side and the trustees kind of took care of the building and paying the pastors and things like that. So I was just always with them because I'm six years younger than my sister and eight years younger than my brother. So they were like off doing their thing and I was hanging out with my pops. And so I think that really wore off on me a lot. Like he cooked every Easter breakfast dinner and they would do a sweetheart banquet at valentine's day and um just everything that had we cut the grass at the church every week and it's acres and acres and acres and a baseball field and like it was crazy and i just that's just what i assumed was what everybody did right that's what you do on a tuesday night is you go and cut grass for six hours right (laughs) so i think that that was really ingrained in me to um help and serve and to lead by example I mean, that, that's really, um, that's kind of my mantra. Cause it's, you know, I, I can't ask somebody else to, you know, why don't you guys get off your butts and help these people out or, or, you know, stand up for this cause or whatever we got to do if I'm not doing it myself. So I just try to live it. Um, and I've got three strong women that I live with and they, they kind of are on the same page. So, um, we just kind of, you know, we're the make, tailors. Just, just make ro- it happen. Just rocking it out over on Stony yeah. Creek Road. You know, I so. love it. So I one thing I will say, so I joined in 22, and I was most impressed with the events as we were, um, as I was kicking off and we were having community events. So we had a volunteering event, and you offered to provide pizza for that event. We had the Girl Scouts, or they were brownies at the time, yeah. I think, that came in and did a project, and you offered to feed them. So you're very um, generous as well within the community, not only just helping others, but also donating, you know, food or your time. So, um, and I don't know that we talked about it. I know we had a little snafu before we started, but you're like by town. So Lake Orion and Oxford. 
Yes. How do you decide, like, you only have so much time in your day. How do you decide what you're going to spend your time on? So I'm kind of, uh, you know, God, family, school board, business, you know, not necessarily in that order every day because you can't be. Sure. Um, but uh, I've I've been a member of the Lake Orion School Board for 10 years and kind of basically when Natalie was in second grade and she graduated last year. So um, that was one of those things. Somebody came to me and said, hey, there's an opening on the school board. And I was the only dad that went to all the PTO meetings because the position I had at the time, like it was flexible. So I would go super early to work so I could leave at three and go to the meeting. So um, a couple ladies in the PTO approached me and said, you really need to apply for this. And I applied for it out of nine people. I got it. And I was like, why would somebody hire me? Like there's teachers, there was ex board members. I mean, it was crazy. And then I'm like, all right. So then, um, I got on and I, I do very well at the polls too. Like I, I mean, I, I don't spend a lot of money. It's one of those things. If, if people want my common sense view, I'm going to give it to you. If not, that, that's fine too. Yeah. So, um, but as far as balancing between Orient and Oxford, it's always going to be Orient football and it's always going to be Orient girls soccer. But everything else is like, you know, like I love Oxford boys baseball, their program. Um, they're close to my heart. Like they just, you know, they're so good. Um, a couple of the brothers on that team, I actually, the Katie boys, I coached Drew Katie when he was four in soccer with Evelyn and he still calls me coach. Aww. So every time they come in, you know, I see them all the time. I saw them last night. They were over at the arcade for a, a cool event and uh you know they came over and hey what's up coach and that's just i mean i'm like you don't know how to make a dude smile more than that i mean it's just funny you know i mean i feel like we won because we got your business in oxford mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna throw that in there <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to, to have your business in oxford versus lake orion because you're so invested in the lake orion community you grew up there your children go to school there you're on the school board um, I think it was opportunity that was right now. And like Kelly said, like we move fast, like Tom is a very fast mover. So, okay, we invested this money and it's not doing anything until we're taking in money. Right. So there was no locations necessarily available in Orion. There was one that I had just missed out on. Um, but it wasn't in downtown. So I didn't even know, like the business plan didn't call for a downtown or a plaza or a freestanding building. Like it was just kind of like, hey, I can make this really good food. I think we can make a decent profit at it. And I'm not an idiot, right? So, um, but once I got into this downtown thing and like started seeing that and like neighbors just walking over, you know, the, my next door neighbor buys pizza every Tuesday for his whole staff. And he just, he just walks in and he's like, give me my usual. And, you know, just things like that is so cool. And I kind of grew up. You know, we grew up in Orion in the 80s and 90s, so it wasn't nearly what it is now, and we were a mile out of town. So, like, when we were kids, we might ride our bikes downtown to go play in the park, but there wasn't a shopping district or, or you know, anything in either town, really. I mean, um, so I think that hindsight now, I totally made the right choice because we're in such a cool building and such a cool spot, and the partnership we have with with GravCap, with the brewery, being able to feed those folks too. Um, I just think that um, it was a win for us. If it was a win for you too, that's awesome. Um, but if I had to go back and do anything different, I wouldn't. So Good. Yeah, there is something special about a downtown and a business in a downtown. Um, I, do, I don't know if it's just the community, but it's also the feeling. I mean, I think your kids mentioned it. This feels like Mackinac when you guys walked in. Those old buildings that are so neat and so historic, there's something really cool about them. Absolutely. So what's next, Scott? What do you have on the plan for 2024-25? Oh, Lord. <laughs> He's too tired. He's tired. Um, he needs a break. Well, we are, we are just ramping up big with the food truck. Um I just got my Oxford inspection last week. Awesome. And, um, I'm actually doing a gig for 420 at the one of the dispensaries, and I'm there for four hours okay. at Mint um, on Lakeville Road. And that's actually free pizza. They are they pre 
bought all the food for their customers. Oh, wow. And so we're just cooking pizzas and handing it out. So that's going to be fun. Um, probably have 25 or 30 events already scheduled for the food truck. So that's kind of like a big thing. Um, we don't know what's next. There's definitely some uh, things in the hopper that we've been working on, but it's just, it's a tough time economically, um, real estate wise, leasing wise, kind of everybody's keeping everything tight right now. So the, the deals really aren't there. Um, but we're, we're always prepared that if the right deal comes along that who knows what. Something well, don't leave us though. Yeah. No, we wouldn't leave you. Okay, just no. making It'd sure. Be like no. a second I thought location. I was like, "Oh man, second location." We're we're adding on to the empire, not not replacing oh, the empire. That makes me happy. Yeah. So, if someone wanted to rent out your food truck, what would they need to do? So they can email me at Scott at Sick Pizza, or they can just call the pizzeria, and they if I'm not there, they will give you that email. So that's that's the best way because I literally check it 30 times a day. Um, and I've been carrying, I call it my God book. It's just my, uh, literally a written planner because I don't want it in anybody's phone. I, because you know, people are, yeah. I've got all these different notes and you know what we talked about and you know, I'm having all these different conversations with different people because there's definitely different, like there's open houses that you're going to say, I want an open house for my kid. I'm going to have a hundred people. How much is it? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Then there's people that say, we're having a party at school. We want you to come and sell pizza. Okay. Which is a whole nother long discussion mm-hmm. because you have to make sure like last year I did them all and you know, went out and would lose 500 bucks mm-hmm. to go to an event. But that was a, that was, those were valuable lessons and they were worth it. I just, those are things that I won't yeah, necessarily it's a learning do lesson yep. For sure. So, and then there's, um, like prepaid at businesses like we're doing Saturday. So, um, And then there's festivals where you have to actually pay to be in them. So, I mean, there's, it's a whole different world and the cost related to the food truck are almost the same cost as related to a building, except, I mean, obviously you don't have the taxes and, and the actual rent, but when you're talking about every town needs a fire inspection, uh, you need to have at least two health inspections per year. And, you know, everything's a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, yep. you know, and it adds up for sure. And people yeah. think you're going into these places doing $5,000 in business. You're not like you're going in and doing $800. You went to a town that you paid 150 to their mm-hmm. fire department. Like, so it's, it's one of those things where it's volume based, just like, just like the pizzeria where, yeah, we're making it really good, but I don't really want to pay 150 bucks for Holland, Michigan. This, this is just made up, but to be in Holland, Michigan and go do one gig there. Right. So it's kind of like, I'm really trying to stay local. Yeah. Be picky too. 100%. So we've got some open houses in Clarkston, Oxford, Orion, and uh, I think we've got one in Metamora already booked. So that's perfect for me. You know, it's close. And then if all of a sudden, you know, somebody else loses power, I've I've been to an open house where somebody's house, they lost power and they moved the whole open house to that house. Oh, wow. So they had twice as many people. So, you know, if we're five miles from the shop, I can go get more food. Yeah. You know, so um, as far as the raw food, we, we cook everything in the trailer. It's a literally a mini pizzeria in there. It's just the only thing we don't do is we don't make the dough in the truck and we don't grind the cheese or cook the meats or things like that. That's That all happens in the shop. So um, mine is called a STFU, which is a special transitory food unit. Wow. Okay. So I just want to hear. That was probably more, more data than you want. No, I love that. But I do want to hear really quick before we close up about the car shows because they're coming. We're a partner. They're on our awesome magnets that we have for downtown Oxford. People are tearing those up. Yeah. They love those. I went through almost half that pile that you gave me. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I just had a mini like heart attack because you said people are tearing them up. And I'm like, why? (laughs) Tearing them up just like, like sick it, is good, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and cool is not cold. It. So they're Wednesday nights. Oh, man down. Okay. They're Wednesday nights from yep. 5 to 8. So let me just explain a little bit. Okay. Because historically I hate car shows. Oh. So a car show to me is when everybody comes three hours before they're supposed to be there. They all park their cars next to all the people they already know and the cars that they've seen for the past five years. 
and they put their lawn chair behind it and they just sit there, yeah. right? And if somebody wants to come up and talk to them about their car, that's cool. So our vision when we started a couple of years ago, once you guys were able to partner with us so we could use the lot in downtown and, you know, just make it cool, right? Um, our vision was more of a a cruise night to where people would come, park, take pictures of their cars, talk to other people, go to the restaurants, you know, go to the toy store, you know, go get a beer, whatever, um, and just kind of moving, more of a community event rather than just everybody's just sitting there staring at each other. So um, every year, the week of um, – Roadkill, which is when they race on the streets in Woodward, which is always the week before the Dream Cruise. Tom Bailey has a party at the pizzeria, and it's a pizza party. And all these crazies that come as far as the race car guys that are racing on Woodward bring their cars. So it's kind of, that's kind of a special night. So yeah. kind of watch for that one. Um, but we, we teamed up with... Um, Sullivan's, the Oxford DDA, GravCap, and Zero's Arcade, and we're going to do something special. Um, we're talking about doing um, a token where you'll get a token, and that will give you a special offer at any of these places. So um, we're just trying to kick it up a notch and to where um, it just it it's cool. It's been fine, but it's one of those things where right now I don't feel like I'm doing a whole lot. Like when people are there, it's the same people that would be sitting somewhere else where let's make it special to where people want to come to Oxford. They want to check out this cool old town. They want to have feelings like they walk in and say, it's like being in Mackinac. They want to walk in grab cap and say, this is freaking awesome. Like, yeah. you know, I'd never knew anything about this, you know? So that's kind of my goal. And I know that's like your goal. That's your job. Right. So I'm just trying to, um, you know, really bump it up a notch to where it's something that it's talked about. We also made an investment. Um, there's a magazine called the cruise and news that's owned by Mickey York, which is the, uh, broadcaster for the tigers and for the red wings. And he's been to a bunch of our car shows and he's a big fan of Tom's. And we finally decided that we were going to do it. So we did two full page ads in that for May and July. Um, kind of hoping to reach out a little further because a lot of these guys that have these cars especially the drive to drag cars which is a whole nother a whole nother series right but um those are cars that they have to they race their car at the track then they have to drive that same car to the next track maybe 100 miles away mm -hmm. so a lot of these guys i think that if we can get out to them they're practicing their you know they're driving they might be down by the airport but they want to drive out to oxford to put hundred miles on their car. So, um, we're just looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun. And I think that, um, I was always trying to get businesses involved and it was kind of like nilly nally, you know, and, and never an actual plan. But I think with the token system, that's going to be something cool. And, you know, I think it'll just, if nothing else, it'll get people talking like, what are those poker chips? Like, how do I get a poker chip? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, go buy a classic car. <laughs> <laughs> and or then go, to, then go mean, park it. Exactly. Well, with that going on and wind down Wednesdays behind Victoria's, I think that we can definitely bring more people downtown and hopefully, you know, maybe the husbands go check out some cars. He leaves his wife at Victoria's for some wine. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I just feel like a and family it's such night. a family friendly <laughs> night. And, you know, it's safe in the back parking lot there. We also have Washington Square there with games and things like that. So it's definitely something that you can come down for a few hours and enjoy Oxford, enjoy a slice of pizza, look at the cars, and kind of go around town. So I hope – we didn't get very lucky with weather last year. Yeah. And it seemed like every Wednesday we had rain. So I'm hoping for some better weather. Yeah. This year. And I think sure. the other thing with the kids is – you know, these kids that live in these subdivisions and, and a little bit further out, like, let's show them what a downtown is and how yeah. cool it is to be in a downtown. Like, because, you know, I didn't, like I said, I didn't necessarily have that when I was young. And I think that if I could have been walking up and down these streets and like, actually there's stores that you want to walk into yeah. or there's food that you really want to eat. I mean, I think it's awesome, you know, 
and you know you can get a great coffee you can mm-hmm. get a toy you know whatever so um i think that that's also important you know just um socializing the kids to where hey we're playing in a parking lot around all these cool old cars you know and yeah so i mean yeah the that's younger a big... generation for sure i mean one thousand percent we try to teach our kids that but obviously it's our job so we feel like we have we're to a but yeah yeah, but I mean, it is something I, I went and talked with a couple of groups of fifth graders this past week about the DDA and just local government for their career day. And it shocked me how many kids didn't know even what a village council was or DDA or local government. And it's just something that I'm like, man, we really need to get out there and to help these kids and the younger generation understand like how even they can get involved at this age. Right. Well, and it's not even children, to be honest. And I'll use myself as an example. Before I started working here, you know, I lived in Oxford for several years, and I didn't know the difference between the township and the village. And I think that's pretty common for unless you're involved in the community more, that understanding the difference um, in those areas as well. So it is a lot of education, which is part of what we're doing here, right? Yes. That's why we're doing the podcast is to highlight businesses and kind of share, like, what what are we doing and why are we here? She had no idea how fun the DBA was. Yet, that is so. true. <laughs> Although I heard prior to your joining, I don't know how fun it was. I mean, just it saying. was fine. I picked it up a bit. <laughs> a little <laughs> more energy. Yes. Well, Scott, thank you. Is yes. there anything else you want to add in before we take it away? I don't think so. I think you guys have been very thorough and I appreciate the platform. Of yeah. Of course. Thanks thank for you. coming. Absolutely. We love you. Love you too. So, what's new, Kelly? I don't even know at this point. <laughs> we had, we've been so busy, been busy this week. I think we were on, I think this was like our seventh meeting today. And yeah. this wasn't a meeting. This is the fun part of our day. But yeah. that is how many people we had to meet with today. And not that we had to meet with them, but just good things happening. New businesses coming in, mm-hmm. um, new events coming into play where people want to partner with us. Um, business education. Yes. Uh, yeah. Talking with the school system about the IB students that are going to mm-hmm. be coming downtown and learning about some of the downtown businesses. So it's been exciting. It has been. It's it's busy, though. Very, very busy. But it's fun. And it's it's been a good day. It's been a good week. We have a lot to look forward to. And now we're getting closer to our summer kickoff. So we have more to do. I think we have everything buttoned up like from an administrative standpoint, but now we're getting closer to the implementation side yep. of it. Yeah, which we had an interview with one intern today. Mm-hmm. We have two more Mondays, so hopefully we can get some youngins to come help us some lift all the things. Young muscles. <laughs> oh. But I will say, if you're listening right now, if you would do us a favor and just hit share on this podcast yeah. because we really want stories like Scott's today to be heard and just for people to show our business owners a little love and to understand more of what we do for the DDA. But part of our budget does not include marketing for our podcast. So we need to really go at it grassroots. So if you'll click that share button, it would really help us. It'd be great. And we're working to try and get these uh, Facebook live. We, I mentioned earlier, there was a little snafu uh, we were trying to actually do that and started the podcast, but then just we're finding some technical difficulties. So we had to um, stop that process, but hoping to be able to do that as well. Cause we do, we want to share, you know, the business owners making them not just, you know, not just sick pizza, but he's a person, he's a human, he has a family, he has feelings. Um, so just getting to know you and knowing the people within the community and, you know, make what what makes Oxford such a great place? Yeah, and I'm actually fascinated at hearing how people got started. Me too. Just everybody's background is so different and I so know. unique, and how they end up where they're at in their passion, which I think is so beautiful, right? Yes. And next week we have Grace Carey and Ashley Ross, and it's a little bit unique because they are residents in the downtown, mm-hmm. but they do not own businesses, but they sit on our committees. So it's a little bit more of a behind the scenes look Mm -hmm. at what we do and how we work with our committee members, volunteers and board members. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited. I mean, both of them are completely brilliant. So I'm really excited to chat with them. And I think, too, both of them have helped us with our grants in the past. So I think that'll be a fun thing to talk about next week, too, is around our grant process and how we go about trying to get 
money to help us do the things we want to do. Good, because we need more help because <laughs> we just had five more grants come across our desk this week. Another thing I wanted to mention is we posted, since our last podcast, we posted a form on our website that is calling to Oxford residents to share experiences that they've had within Oxford. What has been a unique experience that you've had? What's really wowed you? What do you love about Oxford? And we will take some of those that we get and read those on our podcast as we continue to go forward. So please fill that out and make sure you share what you love about Oxford because, again, that's part of why we're here is to share what we do and what you guys love and And why we do it. Exactly. (laughs) Awesome. Well, great show. Thanks, Scott, again for coming. And we will see you all next week. Bye, guys. Bye.